Hola, what's up everybody? I had to rearrange and shuffle my morning to prioritize this call that was out of town. We got a walk-in freezer, too warm. That's what the email says, so let's get down. Can't remember if that's the one that we've put in an intelligent, but I think that was a cooler. So the freezer is a really old, I want to say RDI system. Do not like those, but let's go take a look at it. Ignore the mess. Whatsoever. Oh, I've worked on this one time for the timer. So there's no ice buildup, it's super clean. Alright. So tracing the wires, this is a fan motor that never came on. I think I did this. Um, our fan cycle switch should be on right now because it turns on when the pressure gets high enough. So this is bad. Fan cycle control, which honestly down here we don't really need. So the way it's wired now is it's on the load side of the contactor, right? So when it pulls in, the compressor and the fan motor come in, right? There's no delay, there's no issue. Uh, like I said, it hardly gets cold here. Our coldest weather is like 50 degrees, 40 sometimes. So fan cycle, we don't even have them on other equipment. So that's not a big issue. It is soldered in. So it's just, you know, that's a big repair or a high bill that they don't probably wouldn't want anyway. Um, so we do have power because our compressor comes on obviously and that motor is locked up so it spins freely what are the odds that it's just the capacitor this is a five i might have that oh i should have that Because I do sure as hell do not have that motor. So maybe we can get them going with this real quick. That capacitor is going to be my HVAC drawer. So I do have these that are universal. Oh, yeah. But I have this one that I've been trying to get rid of. Because I don't deal with five macrofarads very often. Perfect. We got 5.15, just make sure our connection's good and put that back. I'm still gonna get a price on this motor and availability for them. Um, like I said, I don't see any issues with it, but I have had, not this kind of motor, but another one, like a cheaper one that just kept blowing out the caps. So we had to replace the home. Like I did this repair, got, called, got a call back and I did it like again so that one i ended up replacing the motor and that solved the issue so not not to say you won't i mean the safest bet is just replace the whole motor but i don't have these so let's see if it starts with this and then we'll give a recommendation and a price just in case they want to get ahead of it or you know wait till it gives out i can already have a motor ready or let them know how long it takes to get it if it's not in stock all right let's just bump it real quick All right, much, much better. We got normal pressures now, so I'm gonna take off. 
my probes. I'm gonna go down and make sure, cause it's a freezer that we're getting down to temperature. Um, I might walk next door and get something to eat before I go back in town. Cause I got another, uh, I got another cooler, a walking cooler to check up on. All right, so first of all, check your capacitors, check your basics. So all I wanted to know is did I have power going to that motor, right? And we did because it's on the load side of the contactor. So we had power going there. Uh, the only other thing that would start it obviously is a capacitor. So then, you know, do uh, your due diligence and check the capacitors. Um, like I said, we are going to get a price on the motor. I did find it. I remember these motors because I've, I've seen them only a couple of times. Uh, another company came in and put all these uh, RDI systems, not a big fan of them. Those original motors are $500, that condenser motor. So I did a quick search again. Google is your best friend when you're looking at part numbers because um, sometimes I, I won't find it in my supply house by the number or the numbers half scratched off, something like that. I accidentally put an F instead of an E at the end and my supply house did not, it just said no results. I Googled it, it corrected me on the model number typed that back into my supply house app and then I found it. So there is a Packard replacement, which I'll probably end up qu quoting for that. That was like 200 bucks versus OEM, which was 500 bucks. So we'll give them that price, that quote in case it fails. If it's something like a capacitor or anything like that, I'll tell them, okay, like it was just this, I think we're good, but the motor could potentially be going out. Don't try to sell them on anything. I don't like to push anything. I just want to give them that warning. And if they tell me, go ahead and replace it. Or if they ask me, uh, or if they just want to get ahead of it, that's their, that's their call, right? So just doing that because in the past I've been like, oh, you're good, you're fine. And then like get a, a call back and it's the same issue. The temperature dropped, everything was good. They said it went out overnight. That's why everything had thawed out. And uh, up until then it was working fine. So that capacitor just died. Fan wouldn't let it come on or fan wouldn't come on, wouldn't let the system stay on, which another point, do not bypass any safeties. Like I bypass the fan cycle control because of the area that I live in. We'd never get freezing. We, our win we don't even get winter sometimes. Sometimes our winters are like 60 degree days and that's it. And um, so we don't really have to do or compensate for low ambient condition. You never want to bypass a fan cycle control for a for an ice machine. They use the fan cycle control for a completely different reason, which is like, for one, the low ambient ish, the low ambient conditions, but also for your harvest and all that, you need that fan cycle control. If you live in an area that gets really cold, you're going to need the fan cycle control, you know, stuff like that. So a lot of equipment here doesn't even have any low ambient kits or anything on it. So it's whatever. So never bypass because if we had a bypass, high pressure switches, uh, all that other stuff, or even a low, low pressure switch, you're going to cook that compressor would have been cooked, right? Because the fan would have been off and it would have kept trying to run, kept tripping on internal overload. And after so many times internally, that thing's just going to uh, screw up. Now I need to go to a walk-in cooler now back in town. I'm an hour or so out of town. So I came all this way for a capacitor, but you know, we charge the time and all that. So and now I'm going to drive back. I got a walk-in cooler that one of our guys was having issues with. I really wanted him to condemn this unit. It's a semi-hermatic R22 system that has had multiple issues. I don't like the way the motors sound. A lot of these motors are hard to get and expensive now. So I'm going to go back to that one and uh, worst comes to worst. Just be honest with them and you know, tell them it's not repairable.
So what a what a beaut, right? So that's our semi-hermatic. What he was messing with was the TXV, and I had to ask him if it was just a power head or what it was that made it a ball of ice. It's not doing that anymore, but I don't think he made any adjustments because it was super high, super heat. We're trying to bring that down to 10-ish. It's, it's actually 42, it's not too bad. It's mid 40s, I got it down to 42, 41. I'm gonna make more adjustments if needed and then make sure that it drops temp. Uh, but yeah, it's an older system. I'm not gonna fault him for anything too much. It's, it's, it, it is what we can you know, do with it. It's just whatever we can do. Because uh, according to him, they didn't want to replace anything right now. All right, much better. All right, so it's it's just not gonna be where I want it to be. My superheat is super low and I have to have it that way. And then I just kind of made it to where it's the minimal amount of frost that I would be comfortable with. And that's just, you know, because we're switching over R22 to a completely different replacement and the temperatures, the pressures and the temperatures are a lot lower than what it, it's, it would be with R22. So at this point, um, like I said, I don't want to mess with it too much because, you know, a lot of money will go into it for it to just barely work. And then like, I don't know how long it'll last, right? So I'm going to get it to where it's a safe temperature. It was not uh, horrible. It was low 40s. Uh, I need to get it to a safe temperature for them to buy them some time until they uh, agree to replace it. So it's gonna be limping on. That's the only thing we can do. I, I wish we would have condemned it, but it is what it is. I'm stuck here making minute adjustments just to keep it from icing up and to get the proper temp. Again, I don't wanna get like too down, too far down that, uh, that rabbit hole. It's an old system, it's falling apart. And I think somebody replaced the evaporator before yeah they replaced just the evaporator because that is a newer newer evaporator on an older um, condenser so i mean mismatch at that i would prefer a new system so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video that was just a little bit of uh back and forth with a couple of calls i also had to it wasn't anything i was, I was trying to record a little um what do you call it sped up montage of you know checking out the fryer but all i had to do was put the panel back it fell off the customer said so i went the screws were messed up it was missing another one so i went and got some screws and drilled them in and made sure i put it in place and everything i, I just couldn't record because there's an old man hovering over me uh one of the cooks just watching what i was doing so it's a little bit harder to to record at some places in the kitchen uh, when I got those people literally breathing on me. So uh, like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Appreciate y'all. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. See you guys.